Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Inquisition Update. Uh, my name's Tom Fress. I'll be your host for the next hour. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Thanks for tuning in. I want to uh, back up for continuity. We're talking about the Jesuit sodalities or the secret societies within the Roman Catholic Church, the secret societies of the laity of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, before I even begin, I want to uh, direct my listeners, if you are inclined to study further and to do some research, God's people in this country, Protestants, Bible-believing Protestants, are woefully unfamiliar with these sodalities. And if you're looking for an area of research that's not been well covered, and you'd like to help educate God's people about the vast lay army in in support of the Roman Catholic Church and against Bible Protestantism in this country, I encourage you to investigate and research and report on the sodalities of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, the subtitle of this portion of the chapter, and we're looking at the last full paragraph on page 318 of the book, Code Word Barbalon, if you're following along, is entitled Sodalities, or Catholic Action. All right, the sodalities are the, the, the Catholic action, if you Recall many of our previous programs uh, talking about Catholic action. They were elsewhere known as the Eustachia, the Eustachia, or the Eustachi, the, the Catholic action. And these are the lay organizations, the secret societies within the Roman Catholic Church, primarily composed of, of lay entities, pew sitters in the Roman Catholic Church, and how they serve the Jesuit order. Now, it begins, in 1772, the man who was to become the first Catholic archbishop in America, the Jesuit John Carroll, he's the one who is largely ignored by researchers today, and that was the first archbishop of the Roman Catholic Church here in America, Jesuit priest John Carroll, and we've talked about him quite a bit here on Inquisition Update. He was also appointed by the Jesuit general, Lorenzo Ricci, as the prefect of sodality. Okay? What you ask is, what you ask is a sodality. A sodality is a secret, usually lay fraternity within the Roman Catholic Church. What does the title prefect of sodality mean? The New Catholic Encyclopedia explains, quote, a chief organizer of laymen for the promotion of some form of social action, unquote. Now, we're about to see social upheaval in this country, the new social order as taught by the Roman Catholic Church. Now, this has been openly proclaimed in the Pope's recent encyclical, Charity and Truth, or Caritas in Veritate is its Italian term. It's Italian title. The new social order. That's the social aspect of the new world order of the Pope. This global government, global religion, and global economic system that's being called for by the Pope of Rome. And it says, what form of social action, we ask? In the army of the Roman Catholic Church, the sodalities are the paramilitary. Now, does that remind you of what we've talked about previously about the Eustachia or the Eustachi? They were a paramilitary Catholic lay organization that persecuted the Orthodox Christians in the former Yugoslavia. They were ruthless killers, torturers. Uh, they forced the Orthodox to convert to Roman Catholicism. And those who wouldn't co convert to Roman Catholicism were mowed down with machine guns and pushed into mass graves with bulldozers. Those who did convert to Roman Catholicism were mowed down with machine guns and p pushed into mass graves by bulldozers. 
And that's what we can expect from the paramilitary of the Roman Catholic Church, the Eustatia, or the Sodalities, the Catholic action of the Roman Catholic Church. All right? The army of the Roman Catholic Church, the Sodalities, are the paramilitary. The ordinary priest, the regular army, while the well-drilled Jesuits are the crack troops, or Minutemen, ready to spring into action at any moment, and it says, to do God's work. That's right. He that killeth you will think he doeth God's service. This is the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And that's what the Eustatia, or the Catholic action, or the Roman Catholic sodalities think they do. They do God's service when they kill a heretic. And it says, all sodalities are required to undertake similar rituals as the Jesuits. An examination of the conscience, not unlike the Jesuits themselves, a five-step method based on the spiritual exercises of Ignatius Loyola. Remember, the spiritual exercises we talked about in, in brief is simply visualizations, in other words, a complete and total departure from the Scripture. And then engage oneself in visualizations, meditations, repetitious prayer, and uh, occult behavior. That's, that's what the basis of Ignatius Loyola's spiritual exercises are. They're not based in Scripture whatsoever. They're vain imaginations. And all of it to cultivate a spiritual influence. To, to invite... Uh, familiar spirits to take over. It's a form of channeling. All right, and these 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 Jesuit spiritual exercises of Ignatius Loyola are even unwittingly practiced in Protestant churches today. Okay, the the Catholic action undergoes these spiritual exercises. These diabolical Jesuit sodalities take part in Ignatian spiritual exercises. And that's where they get their, their power from Satan himself. And it says the sodalities have a long history of affiliation to the Jesuit order. For example, the sodality of the Sacred Heart or the confraternity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which extends throughout the world, it's a global organization, was established in 1729 by the efforts of Jesuit father Joseph Gilafetti. All right. Now, now we're going to talk specifically about one particular sodality. It's called Prima Primaria. And it says the work carried on by the Jesuits through the sodalities, through these lay secret societies, particularly that of Prima Primaria, has been completely overlooked by those who study the Society of Jesus. Now, this is another call, now by the author, that we are woefully lacking in our understanding of these Jesuit sodalities. And it said, indeed, as far as I'm aware, it has never been adequately described by any non-Catholic writer in recent times. The first and greatest sodality, the mother of them all, is the sodality of the Blessed Virgin Mary, also called the primary sodality, or the prima primaria. It was founded in 1563 at Rome in the Roman College of the Jesuits by John Lunas, who was received into the Society of Jesus by Ignatius Loyola himself on January 13, 1556. In 1584, Pope Gregory XIII issued the bull Omnipotentus Dei, recognizing Father Lunas' sodality, the prima primaria, the primary congregation to which all other sodalities or confraternities were to be aggregated or collected together under new rules. Thus, since 1584, then, all the sodalities throughout the world have been under the ubiquitous hands of the Jesuits through the Jesuit sodality of the Blessed Virgin Mary, also known as Prima Primaria. He continues, he said, E. Mullins, 
a Jesuit writes, quote, the new rules annulled all others and were to be observed henceforth by all sodalities. The importance of the new rules can hardly be exaggerated, says the writer. They coordinated the forces and directed their efforts toward one and the same aim everywhere. Unquote. That's from Elder Mullen, Society of Jesus, a Jesuit priest in his history of the Prima Primaria, published 1917, page 75 of the work. So, at this time, all the sodalities, all the secret societies came under one jurisdiction, one head of control, and that was the Jesuit order, so that the, all the sodalities would have the same aim everywhere, going to focus their attention on something. Now, of course, the immediate, the, the immediate question is, what is the single object? Well, it's the New World Order. It's the overthrow of anything contrary to the Pope's desire to rule the world. A goal that has been sought by the papacy ever since the 5th century. Now it says, in this way the Jesuits have been able to unsuspectingly extend their influence and spy networks into all territories. Sodalities affiliated with the Prima Primaria exist in nearly all the chief towns of England, Ireland, Scotland, and America. Wherever the Society of Jesus owns a church, this mysterious organization, Prima Primaria, has evidently played an important part in the past history of the Jesuit order, for it boasts of having had almost uh, amongst its members such distinguished personages as Popes Urban VIII, Alexander VII, Clement IX, and Clement X, together with a host of cardinals. Said Walsh, quote, The various sodalities established by the Jesuits for the different classes have frequently been utilized by them for furthering their political schemes, political schemes, and mischievous plans. They proved very serviceable to the Jesuits, unquote. And it says, the following is a revealing extract from the Catholic Encyclopedia about who really controls the sodalities. Quote, Benedict XIV, by a brief of 8 September 1751, granted the Jesuit general authority to unite with the Roman main sodality, Prima Primaria, other sodalities of either sex. Pope Leo XII, on March 1825, granted the Jesuit general the right to unite all sodalities, even if they existed outside of Jesuit houses. On the 8th of December of the same year, the General of the Society of Jesus approved new general rules for the sodalities under Jesuit direction, that is, the leadership was the Jesuits, and it says, wherever the Society of Jesus went to establish colleges and missions, a sodality was soon erected in that place. Membership rose to many hundreds of thousands. After the restoration of the Society of Jesus, the sodalities grew enormously. In the 50 years after the Declaration of the Dogma of the Immaculate Conception in 1854, nearly 35 thousand of these new sodalities were united with the Roman main sodality. That would be Prima Primaria. 35,000 different secret societies were created at the time of the Declaration of the Immaculate Conception. You suppose that's a coincidence? Think of the, think of the implications. Now, we're not done with the quote yet. It says... Continue with a quote, it says, In the year 1910 alone, 1,132 new sodalities were established, of which 178 were in North America. Emperors, kings, and princes have been zealous members of sodalities, including among their most faithful members the greatest and noblest men of every position of life, generals and scholars of the highest rank. 
sodalities are the nurseries for youth, it says, unquote. Now, every one of these sodalities is a secret society of lay Roman Catholics. Each of them serve a purpose, most of them a political purpose. And time wouldn't permit us, obviously, to discuss all 35,000 of these, and that's just at this period of time. What, what they are now, one can only imagine. That's why this, this field of research is wide open. And this is the nuts and bolts of the power behind the overthrow of our Constitution, the overthrow of Protestantism. This is the vanguard of the Counter-Reformation. This, these are the people that are going to take over this country and the world for the Pope. These are the, the, the foot soldiers, the front-line foot soldiers for the Pope. They're your next-door neighbors. You know, you've heard me talk about so many times we make apology so as not to offend individual Roman Catholics in the country. But when you begin to realize what their purpose is in the Roman Catholic Church, then you begin to see your next-door neighbor Roman Catholic not so much as that friendly man or woman next door, but a fifth column for the Pope. Might he or she be a member of one of these secret societies, one of these secret lay organizations under the direct control of the Jesuit general in Rome who has sworn a bloody oath to exterminate Protestants and destroy Protestantism or, seek, or, or cease to be a Jesuit? Isn't it fair? Isn't it fair? to at least consider the possibility that every Roman Catholic in this country could be a militia for the Pope, a fifth column living within our society, accepted as members of our society, equal members of our society, but who have a primary oath to the Pope of Rome to the Jesuit general who controls their secret societies, to which they are bound also with oaths. Now it says these sodalities are not mere social clubs or prayer groups. They're all secret societies or confraternities with their secret mission, pledges, and oaths. Some 35,000 new sodalities were formed since 1854. There are sodalities of priests, of nobles, of merchants, of working men, of clerks, of married, of married men, of unmarried men, of soldiers, yes, even soldiers, all affiliated to the prima primaria sodality in the Roman College of the Society of Jesus. That, that makes, you know, in a manner of speaking, every one of these members of these secret societies, these sodalities, these Eustachi are Jesuit coadjutors. And it says the sodalities affiliated to the Prima Primaria include female sodalities such as the Children of Mary or Figli de, Mar de Maria. And it says, nor are the sodalities confined to the upper ranks of society. Quote, special sodalities exist for different classes of society. This, according to Walsh, in his super, page 340. The Jesuits have established sodalities of young men in every city in America. Let me read that again. The Jesuits have established sodalities, or eustachi, Catholic action, in every city in America. The city of New York had its Catholic Union and close, uh, closely allied to this, though more limited in its objects, was the Xavier Union, unquote. Each sodality has hundreds and in some cases thousands of members around the world. So we see as the Catholic peer Lord Montague said, quote, the Roman Catholic Church is the largest secret society in the world, beside which Freemasonry is but a pygmy. 
Freemasonry is but a pygmy compared to the secret societies of the Roman Catholic Church. And it says, to whom do these sodalities or guilds owe their allegiance? To the Constitution of America? No. The Roman Catholic Church says no. If the Pope directed the Roman Catholics of this country to overthrow the Constitution, sell the nationality of the country, and annex it as a dependent province, they would be bound to obey, unquote. Now, let me read this again, because this has already happened. This has already happened. If the Pope directed the Roman Catholics of this country to overthrow the Constitution, do you see the Constitution being overthrown today? Do you suppose it might have been the Pope that overthrew the Constitution? It might have been overthrown by any number of thousands of Jesuit sodalities, Catholic lay secret societies in this country, many of which sit in Congress, many of which sit in the White House of the United States, many of which sit on the Supreme Court of the United States. It's already happened. All right? They've overthrown the Constitution. What if they sell the nationality of the country? Do you know our nation has already been destroyed? The Council on Foreign Relations, which is run by the Knights of Malta, was designed to destroy the sovereignty of the United States and make the United States a dependent province of the United Nations. And not just the United States, but all the other nations of the world. You see how this begins to take shape as a reality in our world today? These are the Jesuit sodalities. This is what they do. And not only are they destroying our Constitution, destroying our national sovereignty, but they've completely rewritten, redrawn the borders. We're not the United States of America anymore. We're the North American Union. It's Canada, Mexico, and the United States. You know, it's a so-called Protestant nation sandwiched between French Catholic Canada and Spanish Catholic Mexico. And the borders are secured only for those who are trying to flee this country. The borders are wide open for anybody wanting to come in. And who would they be? Roman Catholics, members of Jesuit sodalities, many of which take the form of, of uh, mobs, gangs that wreak terror all over the southwestern United States. And they're all coddled by the Jesuit priests in the Roman Catholic Church. They're making America Catholic right before our very eyes, and all we have to do is open up and our eyes and acknowledge what we can see, facts on the ground. It's provable, it's observable. You're listening to the Inquisition Update on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Have you seen the Left Behind movies? Have you read the Left Behind fictional book series? Not everyone believes Left Behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character 
as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin because they see the world stage shaping to fulfill what they have been led to believe is sound biblical interpretation a left behind rapture scenario this false view of prophecy is reinforced in the mind not only of its adherents but also includes those who have been merely exposed to the specific media is it possible that false prophecy can be fulfilled the rapture theories have always been in dispute pre-trib mid-trib and post-trib disputes have risen up in exclusively evangelical circles of recent history so that when true believers don't suddenly disappear this element will easily go by the wayside when all see a new Jewish temple begin to be built will this be part of the great delusion that will come upon the whole earth it seems that this great prophetic delusion has already overcome practically the entire American evangelical and Christian world get the book the rapture will be canceled to learn more visit crossTheBorder.org. that's c-r-o-s-s crossTheBorder.org. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Okay, welcome back to the second half of Inquisition Update on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. If you enjoy Inquisition Update, please support Inquisition Update by supporting FirstAmendmentRadio.com. We're continuing the discussion of the book Code Word Barbalon, 666, Danger in the Vatican, the Sons of Loyola and their Plans for World Domination. And you can get this book at luxverbi.org, www.luxverbi.org. I highly recommend this book. I recommend that you get two copies, one for yourself to research further and one to share with a friend, someone who put the book into good use. And uh, my prayer goes to all those who are listening. My prayer goes that God would open your eyes to understand what is about to befall the United States of America and who is to bring our destruction to pass. It's the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, it's not hyperbole. It's not anti-Catholic bigotry. It's the provable truth, the observable truth. Now, we're talking about the sodalities these frontline militias, these secret societies by the lay or the lay people of the Roman Catholic Church, not just in this country but around the world. Remember the New World Order is a global New World Order. 
it says, And to whom do these sodalities and guilds owe their allegiance? To the Constitution of America? The Catholic Church says no. Quote, If the Pope directed the Roman Catholics in this country to overthrow the Constitution, sell the nationality or the sovereignty of the country, and annex it to a dependent province, they would be bound to obey. Unquote. How is this possible? The Catholic Church holds the consciences of its subjects in the United States and around the world by the confessional, and thus they destroy their freedom. Their consciences, I will add, are not bound by Christ, but Antichrist. Their consciences are not bound to God's law, but to the Pope's law. Their fealty is not to Christ, but to the Pope. And they do not obey Christ, they obey the Pope. And whatever the Pope says, they are bound by their consciences, not just their minds, but their will is bound to the Pope. And lying in the balance is their eternal destiny. If they defy the Pope, they are ipso facto excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church teaches Catholics from cradle to the grave that outside the Roman Catholic Church there is no salvation. So every devout Roman Catholic in this country is first a Roman Catholic or a papist and second an American. It says the Catholic Church holds the consciences of its subjects in the United States, and I will add the words around the world, also all Catholics all over the world, by the confessional, and thus their freedom is destroyed. Quote, by the confessional, the priest ob obtains dominion over the conscience, and there is an end to personal liberty. The confessional gives to the priest and uh, uh, gives to the priest a thorough knowledge of the character of his victims. Unquote. Lord Denbigh's famous declaration is as true as it is instructive. Quote, I am a Catholic first, an Englishman afterwards. Unquote. Thus, in the sodalities, we have a sprawling, federated republic, a miniature, uh, a mini-state inside of America whose economic, civil, and social ideals are dictated by Rome. That's the definition of a fifth column. We have a separate nation living within this nation. Now, and of course, all, all of our focus is placed on the Muslims coming in, and the fear is, is driven to the marrow of our bones that they will adopt not our constitution and body of laws in this country, but that they will impose within their growing nation in this country their own law, Sharia law. And then, when they gain enough strength, they will impose their law upon ours. <laughs> but that's what's happening. That's what the Roman Catholic Church is doing. And to cover up what is clearly happening in this country, what it, what you can just see with your eyes, they are projecting upon a, a, a Muslim boogeyman, focusing all of our attention on the Muslims, engaging us in war against the Muslims, putting us to worry and hand wringing over a proposed mosque. On the side, on the scene of 9/11, Ground Zero, focusing all of our attention on a on a wayward Baptist priest and, uh, well, <laughs> accurately stated, a Baptist priest in Florida wanting wanting to burn Qurans. It's all about the Muslims. It's all about the Muslims. We're soaked day and night 
about the Muslims. We're soaked with information from every direction about the Muslims, only to cover up what the Vatican is doing in this country. And if you're one of my regular listeners here on Inquisition Update, you're very fortunate to know this. Because very few people are talking about this in the country. But I talk about it every day. We don't have to worry about Sharia law. We have to worry about Roman Catholic canon law. Ask yourself the question, as Nicholas Arthur would say if he were here on the program, he would say, where does it tell us in Daniel chapter 2 about a Muslim empire? Where is the fifth beast for the Muslims? There isn't one. God told us the ending from the beginning. God told us through the prophet Daniel. It's a Roman Empire that will be in power at the time of Christ's return. And that power was forming when Christ was born. We need not look or fear an Islamic empire in the world. It's not going to happen according to God in his book. So don't let Fox News and CNN and MSNBC and CNN and Alex Jones and everybody else in the world to force you to wring your hands over the Muslim horde. If the Muslims are a factor here in the United States, it's only because Rome is using them. Rome is using them. Behind every Islamo-fascist is a Jesuit priest. Behind every Arab imam, every Islamic imam, is a Jesuit priest. Or God is a liar. And the prophet Daniel is no prophet. And the book is not God's. Do we trust what God said? Shall we learn what Daniel told us in chapter 2 of Daniel? And shall we hold it in our spirits and let it sink to the marrow of our bones and comprehend so that no man can deceive us? No news media can deceive us. No mainstream or alternative media personality can deceive us. Look, there's only one truth. There are unlimited permutations of truth, which are lies. And God warned us over and over and over, see that no man deceive you. So where do you go to for the truth? But to God, that's it. The book of Daniel lets us know. The Bible is God's word. We can trust it. We have to trust it or we will be deceived. They control the consciences of every Roman Catholic in this country and around the world through the confessional. Their eternal destinies are determined by their church, not by Christ but by their Antichrist, the Pope. And when the Pope says go, they must march. And the Roman Catholics in this country comprise 25% of the population. And that's only the ones who openly profess Catholicism. Don't forget the ecumenical evangelibellies who were once regarded as Protestant who later shed that distinction to become evangelicals, now they're ecumenical. They're, they're papists in training. How much power and strength, how many numbers have they lent to the Roman Catholic Church in this country? Are we really talking about a mere 25% of the population as though that weren't enough? Good heavens. We could be talking... Tw- 50% of the population of this country has their shoulder to the Roman wheel. And when one begins to comprehend this, one asks himself, why doesn't Rome just squish us like a bug? And the answer is clear. She's just not done using us yet. Shall we remain silent about this? 
Shall we remain focused on the Muslims, participating in our own mind control, participating in our own self-deception? How much do we believe in the Scriptures? He says, uh, Lord Denbig says, uh, I'm a Catholic first and an Englishman afterwards. You know, that's the attitude of every Roman Catholic, every true Roman Catholic in this country. He's first a Catholic and first a subject of the Pope and second an American. He says, thus in the sodalities we have a sprawling federal republic in miniature, a, a mini-state inside of America whose economic, civil, and social ideas are dictated by Rome. That's the New World Order. Now under the subtitle, Sodalities, the Vatican's Lay Spy Network. We're going to get an even broader view of what these sodalities are all about. They're a spy network. So far, for the most part, on the Inquisition update, I've focused my attention on the confessional. What a, what a detailed information-gathering service that is for the Pope. The confessional box in every Roman Catholic Church. But it's far more vast than that. Okay? This author has really opened my eyes just how wide, uh, just how big and broad and deep is this spy network for the Pope and the country. It says, the Canadian historian Parkman writes, quote, There exists in Quebec, under the auspices of the Jesuits, an association called the Saint Famille. They meet in the cathedral every Thursday with closed doors where they relate to each other as they are bound by an oath to do. All they have learned, whether good or evil, concerning other people during the week. Unquote. So that's what this particular association, this Jesuit sodality, does. St. Famille gets together in the cathedral every Thursday and has a gossip session. What's going on in town? What's this or that Protestant doing? What's on the docket for the, the, uh, the, the city council? Who do we need to appoint to get control of the council? How about the library board or the school board? Uh, what what uh, do we need to uh, open another charity? Do we need to improve the, the the Catholic image in town? What can we do? You see what they do. And uh, oh, I heard that Mayor So and So was involved sexually with So and So, and this is how we could overthrow his govern his rulership of the city. And and after we do that, who can we appoint to be the mayor of the, of the town? And, uh, by the way, there's a good job opening up down the street at the uh, water department. And uh, we, need the va we need the Catholic Church to have control of the water supply in this town. So who shall we pick to be uh, interviewed for that position? What name can we recommend to the superintendent of the water department? See how it works? It's huge. It is huge. It says, Nino Lobello, who lived and worked in Rome, confirmed in his book, The Vatican Papers, that, quote, the Vatican spy network has the most efficient and widespread system of espionage in the whole world, outclassing even that of the Russian KGB. He says that among the Vatican's many agents are members of a group known as Soda, uh, Sodalicium Pianum, which means Sodality of Pius, or the League of Pope Pius V, which includes every priest, nun, and monk anywhere on earth. Sodalicium Pianum, more widely known as God's Underground, in other words, the Pope's Underground, was the reactionary papal secret spy organization established by Pope Pius X. Historian John Cornwell confirms that Pope Pius X did indeed induce a secret society called Sodalicium Pianum in 1909 for the sole purpose of espionage. According to Nino Lobello, this faithful army consists of more than 2.5 million people, including many full-time trained agents, diocesan priests, 
regular priests, seminarians, religious males, and nuns, unquote. Apparently, so they would have us believe, Sodalicium pianum was suppressed in 1912 only to reemerge in 1915 to again be suppressed in 1921. But that's by the by, says the author. In a letter dated January 25th, 1925, the Jesuit general Vladimir Ledichowski described the key role of the sodalities. Quote, the sodalities directed by the Jesuits and by others who might wish to have recourse to them help in the forming of new sodalities to be a center of information, to be a source of information, and to encourage the exchange of news items, unquote. The, quote, exchange of items of news is a euphemism for spying. Notice that Jesuit General Ledikowski speaks of the sodalities as being one big center of information for the exchange of news items. These items of information the members glean from their various places of work, education, and residence. Indeed, says Pope Benedict XIV, quote, it is almost incredible what results have sprung from this pious and praiseworthy institution, referring to the sodalities, Catholic action, the Eustachi, not just right here in Protestant America, but around the world. And if you want to know what this, these Jesuit sodalities, these secret societies of the Roman Catholic Church, the Eustachi, are going to do in this country. Just take a look at what they did in the former Yugoslavia. Take a look at what they did in Croatia. And read the book, Terror Over Yugoslavia by Avro Manhattan, and read his quote at the end of the book. It would be wise for Americans to take a careful, close look at what took place in the former Yugoslavia, in Croatia, because it was nothing but a model for what they fully intend to do right here in Protestant America. Now that coming from a Knight of Malta. That's the New World Order. That's how they're going to overthrow. That's how they are overthrowing our government. That's how they are overthrowing our Constitution. They've destroyed the economy. They've racked our nerves with fear of terror, financial ruin, fear of starvation, fear of war, fear of our own shadows, so that we'll surrender willingly and gladly our Protestant liberties and submit ourselves to a global governing authority as called for by the Pope of Rome, Benedict the Sixteenth. It just makes too much sense to deny. You just can't deny this. Not if you're willing to accept the facts on the ground as they are vividly apparent. Now, he's going to continue talking about this Catholic action, the Eustachi, he says, danger ahead, stop, look, listen. He says, in 1948, the apostolic constitution, bis seculari dei, or dei, declared the sodalities Catholic action. Pius XI called them lay apostolate. All right? So there's another name for them. Sodalities, Catholic action, eustachi, lay apostolate, Whatever by whatever name, they're the militia for the Pope. It says Pope Pius XI called them lay apostolate and reaffirmed their Jesuit charism, in other words, their Jesuit influence and control. They're controlled by the Jesuit order. And he declared them a particular form of Catholic action. And his successor and his successor, Pope Pius XII, said, quote, the lay apostolate or the Eustachi these, the, these sodalities, like every other apostolate, has two tasks. Two, count them. 
One, to preserve, and two, to conquer, unquote. The sodalities are the vanguard of this so-called Catholic action, with the elite troops of the Jesuits behind. Former Catholic priest Charles Chinicky explained, quote, In order to drill the Roman Catholics and prepare them for the final struggle, the Jesuits have organized them into a great number of secret societies, the ancient order of Hibernians, Apostles of Liberty, Knights of St. Peter, Knight of the Red Branch, etc., etc. Almost all of these secret associations are military ones. They have their headquarters in San Francisco, but their rank and file are scattered all over the United States. They number, and this is at the time of Charles Chinicky back in the 1800s, they number 700,000 soldiers who under the name of U.S. Volunteer Militia are officered by some of the most skillful generals and officers of this republic. See page 283 of his book. That would be 50 Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chinicky. He says to, Ch to Chinicky, uh, to Chinicky's list of secret societies or sodalities, we might add Skull and Bones. That's right, Skull and Bones is a Jesuit sodality. President George W. Bush, and they are all christened a knight of the Roman Catholic Church. Opus Dei the Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Peter Claver, Ancient Egyptian Order of S-C-I-O-T-S, the Independent Order of Foresters, Catholic Order of Foresters, Ancient Order of Foresters, Knights of the Red Cross, Knights of St. John, Knights of Malta, the St. Leopold Foundation, and the other Catholic, and the, and the Catholic League, a legion so vast and pervasive even than the combined armed forces of the United States. Do you remember not long ago Barack Obama said that we need to, ha to enforce uh, and empower law enforcement in this country and equip them and train them equal to that of our own military? Who do you suppose is going to volunteer for this internal police force? They're already in place. The Jesuit sodalities. The Constitution gives us the right to have a militia. They're already in place. The Catholic sodalities. Remember, Jesuit John Carroll was the prefect of the sodalities in this country during the formative years of this country. Stop and think about the consequences. It's a reality. See you tomorrow on Inquisition Update. Stay tuned for Nicholas Arthur's Cross the Border. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, 
and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn, the Jewish people are eager, most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crossTheBorder.org.